The Space Shuttle, transportation into a new era of space flight and the further development of space as a natural resource of Earth providing routine access to space for scientific, defense, and commercial purposes. To achieve this goal, the European Space Agency, in cooperation with the United States, is building Space Lab, a completely outfitted scientific laboratory, carried into orbit and back in the payload bay of the Space Shuttle Orbiter. Space Lab will be used by research institutes, scientific laboratories, industrial companies, government agencies, and individuals from around the world. Earthbound scientists will soon be able to gain routine access to the zero gravity, vacuum, and temperature extremes of space to conduct a wide variety of experiments. Countries participating in the European Space Agency are Austria, Belgium, Denmark, West Germany, France, Italy, the Netherlands, Spain, Switzerland, and the United Kingdom. The first space lab is being financed and built in Europe by ESA. When others in the series are built, they will be constructed by ESA and financed by NASA. Each space lab is planned to fly on as many as 50 missions. The early missions will be managed by the Marshall Space Flight Center. Space Lab's shirt sleeves environment will allow qualified men and women from many nations and scientific disciplines to go into space without becoming career astronauts. These payload specialists, as they are called, will receive training they need for spaceflight from NASA. They will receive training in operating experiments from the scientists who designed and developed them and the payload mission managers. The payload specialists are chosen by a group of scientists composed of a representative from each experiment. Five payload specialists have already been selected for the first mission, two from the United States and one each from West Germany, Switzerland, and the Netherlands. Two of the payload specialists, one from the United States and one from Europe, will fly aboard the shuttle on Space Lab 1. The other three payload specialists will assist with ground-based experiment equipment. Four others, all from the United States, have been picked for Space Lab 2. The commander, pilot, and mission specialist will ride into space in the seats of the flight deck. Additionally, there is auxiliary seating on the mid-deck for up to four payload specialists. Once in orbit, access to Space Lab is through a pressurized tunnel. The habitable laboratory module will allow working room for three people, with a fourth accommodated for brief periods. The module is composed of two segments. The core segment is a complete pressurized workspace, which can be used by itself. Another segment can be added to transport additional experiments and provide more working room. The interior is maintained at the same pressure as experienced at sea level on Earth and the same as the crew compartment of the orbiter. Air ducts and lights are located overhead. There are viewing ports for looking outside, and an overhead optical window for photography and other scientific measurements. There is a scientific airlock overhead which is used to extend and retract materials, sensors, and equipment into open space without depressurizing the cabin. Handrails are provided to assist the laboratory crew members in moving from place to place. Work areas will include workbenches, electrical outlets, writing material, and standard scientific equipment. Experience gained in the Skylab program has shown that when designing work areas for zero gravity, special factors 
must be considered. For instance, when an astronaut is working in a large space, a visual up and down is very helpful to maintain orientation, even though there is no actual up or down in zero gravity. Therefore, the interior of Space Lab is designed with a definite floor and ceiling to provide this visual orientation. We also learned that bending down in zero gravity is very difficult. On Earth, gravity pulls the body down as our muscles relax. However, in zero gravity, other muscles must be used to pull the body into position. This can be quite tiring. Even standing erect is difficult. In zero gravity, the relaxed human body assumes a posture resembling the dead man's float. To accommodate this posture, the crew member stands on special angled platforms, and scientific equipment is mounted to fit this body posture. The pressurized laboratory module will accommodate crew members and experiments. Large scientific equipment requiring an unobstructed or broad field of view or that needs direct exposure to the space environment will be carried on open pallets. A wide variety of experiments can be mounted on these pallets, such as telescopes, antennas, radar, radiometers, and other sensors. In addition to being a mounting platform, each pallet is equipped to provide electrical power and cooling for the equipment, plus connections for cables carrying commands to the experiment and scientific data from it. From one to five pallets may be carried on each flight. Up to three pallets can also be used in various configurations with the pressurized laboratory. When the pallets are used without the pressurized module, equipment used to distribute electrical power and computer support is housed in a small pressurized temperature control container called the igloo. Pallet mounted instruments can be controlled from the laboratory module or by a payload specialist at the payload station in the aft section of the orbiter flight deck. Through the shuttle satellite communication system, scientists on Earth can receive experimental data instantly, even the payload specialist's view through a microscope. Some experiment operations aboard the orbiting laboratory are monitored and directed from the ground by the principal scientists who develop the experiments, backup payload specialists, and a NASA mission manager Many different types of missions can be flown. They can be as short as a single day, with the average length planned to be about seven days. Eventually, missions of up to 30 days can be flown. The orbiter will aim Space Lab and its instruments at the ground for geophysical and environmental investigations. Payload specialists will also test and calibrate equipment to be used in later Earth observation satellites and unmanned astronomical satellites. The scientific eyes of Space Lab may be pointed toward the sun to reveal knowledge of its interaction with the Earth. Beyond the Earth's distorting atmosphere, Space Lab will be able to view the planets stars, comets, novas, distant galaxies, seeing to the farthest reaches of the universe, measuring high energy radiation such as gamma rays, x-rays, and ultraviolet light that cannot pass through our atmosphere. In the field of life sciences, we will study plants, animals and humans in the absence of gravity. Significant changes take place in weightlessness. Comparing living organisms in zero gravity with those in Earth gravity will add to our understanding of basic biological processes, eventually leading to advancements in medicine and other biological fields. There may be advantages in separating and purifying biological substances in zero gravity indicating opportunities to produce ultra-pure vaccines and isolate specific cells and antibodies. There is a potential in space to create medicines and treatments never before available. 
Industry will use Space Lab to make and test new materials such as metal alloys and composite substances. These materials formed without the pull of gravity are uniquely strong, lightweight, and temperature resistant. Also, large crystals of high purity for use in electronics. Uncontaminated glass for lasers, electronics, and optical applications. This is only the immediate short-range forecast for Space Lab. These experiments will lead to others, into fields as yet unimagined. Back on Earth, the mission completed. Space Lab will be removed from the orbiter and the experiments distributed to the investigators for further analysis. The remaining equipment will be removed and the equipment for the next mission installed. Space Lab, a significant part of shuttle operations in the 1980s. A major step forward in global cooperation in space. Expected to produce major contributions in medicine, industrial processing, and scientific fields. An international space laboratory to create new benefits for our nation and for all the people of Earth.